Welcome, Taurus, to April, uh, May, 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 May of 2023. You're going to have some new sense of expansion, luck, and goodness entering into your life during this month that will last a year, as well as the Lord of your sign begging you to do some local fun activities or go for a trip or more as she enters into cancer and changes the tonal quality of what she's up to. You also have a whole lot of action in the Taurus zone of the sky this month, which is all about you. This is one of the most active times of year for you. And this is going to be a bit of a humdinger because we even have a Mercury going direct here in the month of May. Let's talk about how this impacts you for the best ways possible. And I won't cover everything, just the highlights. If you want to know more, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications because then you'll get each of these major life changing activities, including an eclipse. <laughs> uh, and we'll, you'll get all the details that you'll need to know in order to make the most of it. So don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and hit the bell. If you want to learn astrology on May the 6th, I'm opening up doors or 7th to Sky Reader, Time Your Best Life, Be Your Own Astrologer, third time teaching it, probably the last. So if you want to do this course with me for seven weeks live, replays available, um, a Facebook group, plus a bunch of free bonuses and stuff, check the link below. It's super affordable. I promise you uh, it's enough to start becoming an astrologer for your own sky and reading your own chart with timing tools that are ancient and very cool. All right, let's get going and talk about the sky. Number one, big story for you, by far breaking news, Jupiter entering your sign. Every 12 years, Jupiter enters Taurus. This is your turn. This is Jupiter on the 16th of May, moving into Taurus and giving you a year long until May of 2024 new vibe. Now I'm going to warn you, you can gain some weight. A lot of people do when Jupiter moves into their sign, they get either very muscular, very very girthy or very pregnant. So if those things aren't your cup of tea, you make the decisions and you tell Jupiter, no, we'll just be lucky because Jupiter makes you lucky when he's in the house of you. So instead of chubby, you'd be lucky, you know, take your pick. Instead of pregnant, you could be birthing, you know, new ideas. Jupiter expands things. Jupiter brings opportunity. Jupiter brings prosperity, wealth, and luck. And when he's in the house of you, you have those things. You become more magnanimous, more Jupiterian, more leaderful, more generous. Everyone wants to be near you. You radiate mm, good energy. Uh, you're looking for the half full cup. You're looking to feel the prosperity possibilities of who you are, not what you do. You are feeling inside out better than you normally do for the one year that Jupiter is transiting through your first house. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. People always say, I didn't feel this way in my, well, let's just put it this way. Most people will bell curve, you know? Because Jupiter, <laughs> Jupiter in your natal chart and his natal condition can tell us a lot about how well we receive Jupiter when he moves into our sign. So that's where you need to learn astrology. Now, Jupiter here also, you know, brings that luck, but you have to be the agent of the luck. You know, it's not like a drop on your head. You know, you are Jupiterian. You are bringing luck in by taking actions that fortify the possibility of fortune and opportunity and prosperity in your life. You can't sit in your sofa or in your basement for a year and at the transits in next year, go, nothing really happened to me. I didn't get any luck. Well, you know, that old thing about the lottery ticket where the guy goes to heaven and he's at St. Peter's gate and he's like angry at God because he prayed every day, all of his life to win the lottery. And then God says, well, yes, but you had to play. He had to play the game. You had to buy the ticket. <laughs> so that's kind of the vibe you have to do the things to bring the luck you can't just sit on your bum right now second big thing that's going and that you know may 16th is the beginning of that new feeling that you get right and the second big news for you in the month of may the refreshing vibe is that venus is a, the planetary lord of your um, taurus rising sign but sun and moon secondarily you can listen for all three just you know try them out and so she's an important planet for you because she rules you. So basically she will move out of your Gemini space where she's been in the month of April and in the month of May on the 7th, enter into the Gemini is your second house of earnings and it could have helped increase your earnings or focus on earnings. But now she's moving into your third house. Now siblings go here. So you may have more joy, fun, pleasure and companionship regarding siblings, and uncle, cousins, nieces and nephews, extended family. You may also take pleasure and leisure travel while she moves through here, as well as travel that's pretty close to home domestic, but more as importantly, enjoying your local neighborhood, things you do in the local neighborhood. If you have an online virtual neighborhood, like a website, and community that can also be true. If you want to learn something here, a lot of people will take up a skills-based learning 
uh, bring some great joy and pleasure or an artistic learning path, you know, learning to knit, learning to do pottery, learning to paint. My daughter, who's a Taurus son, just expressed a desire to learn how to use a sewing machine. Who knows? Maybe she'll be taking sewing machine lessons at that time. Um, so look for that possibility of some enjoyment and some joy in third house matters uh, coming through the sky during the window of the 7th of May through to about the beginning, like October, June, June the 5th or something like that. The third big story for you this month, by far, is I'm going in order of critical importance, is Mars moving into your fourth house, making an angular connection to your identity, to your house of marriage, your house of career. Now, Mars will go through Leo, your fourth house, Taurus people, once every two years. And here he is now arriving on the doorstep of your fourth house of home, property, real estate on May the 20th. This is also your childhood. This is also your family. It could be your mom and your dad. Usually it's the house of the mother in my, the way I do astrology. Mars coming through this part of your chart can change your home. You may move your home. You may renovate your home. You may do construction in the home. You may have arguments with someone in your home. Be careful for that. Every two years, you go through a period. This is May 20th at six weeks where you don't want to have battles with someone you're living with. Domestic tension can arise during this transit. Now, Mars here can also mean that you are um, changing your home. So some of you will change your home as a result of this transit. Not everybody will, but some of you may. A lot will depend on the placement of the sun in your natal sky when you were born about whether you move your home or not. Now, Mars here can also cause tension with your significant other, even if you're not living together because they're squaring the descendant. So again, you know, everything from not getting along with your roommates, to not getting along with your significant love other, these are possibilities. So just be cautious around tempers flaring, arguments happening when they're not necessarily the best course of action. The best way to harness Mars here is to do construction or passion projects or renovations in the home or to do a lot of board games in the home and have a lot of feisty competition to dispense the tension that could be arising in your home or just to leave the home for a while and you know come back later when this is all over. But it's a big deal transit for you, so pay attention to that. Um, Mercury will go direct on the 14th of May after being retrograde for three weeks. And this is a direct motion Mercury in the house of you. So if you've been waffling, indecisive, unsure, can't make your mind up about something, or if you've been going back to rethink something by May 14th, you've got this more mental clarity. You know what you want, you know where you're going, you know what you're going to do, what your next communication steps are. And that's the kind of vibe. Things go into sort of more clarity after May the 14th. So get looking to that to feel good for you for the most part. There is a new moon in the house of you that's coming up this month on the around the 19th of the month. Let me double check. Mm -hmm. I got to remember this because I just started these videos today. Yes, on the 17th. And if you join my Patreon community for five bucks a month, you'll get this before the public without any ads. Well, and every video I produce that way. Um, description box, Patreon link is down there. But anyway, May new moon, May the 19th, 20th or so around there. I can't remember which date, but it's, you know, the zone of that depends on where you live is going to happen. Um, that is a new moon at 28 degrees of Taurus. Now, obviously if your sun moon or rising sign is at 28 Taurus, it's going to be a big deal. The sun can be father, father figures, career and purpose. Moon Taurus people can be home, nest, mother, mother figures, a safety and security needs. Okay. And we have a new beginning there, but if it's your rising sign, it's everything about your life and it's a new start, a fresh start for you. Get a new moon here every year. So here comes a new moon at 28 degrees. Something new is starting in the sense of your identity and what you focus on in your home, in your relationships, and in your career. All of those can invite in new beginnings. More true for the late degree Taurus, moon, sun, or rising sign people. Now, around the time of the new moon, we have a very interesting tension in the sky, okay? Mars in your fourth house at zero degrees is opposite Pluto at zero degrees of your 10th house. This is a tension, high wire tension energy between career and home, domestic, private life, mother, father, um, family of origin, homeland, home, home base, where you live, and career ambition, career purpose, some gnarly 
Plutonian boss, control freaking dictator in the in the career space, even, but there's tension here because Pluto up there can be like a controlling, powerful figure in the workplace, or secrets or tension or forbidden things in the workplace spilling into your home life or something like that. Now that's happening as I suggested, you know, during that new moon energy. So it's kind of a gnarly um, mashup for everyone, but May 19th and 20th. And then we also have everything T-squaring, okay or whatever to, which is tension energy, right? To Jupiter and sorry, <laughs> brain come back online. T squaring to, yeah, Jupiter and Mercury and the North node. Now the North node is, you know, Rahu, it expands what it touches and Jupiter also expands what it touches and is in the house of you and Uranus is there. So some express, some tension around surprising energy okay like you may not be planning on it is coming through that t-square energy on that new moon it doesn't have to be bad but the energy is about you it's very much about you it's not like oh yeah and by the way i'm involved no you you are directly involved in this t-square um jupiter will be like you know kicking in the most lucky can he's conjunct the north node so there's like an expansion that you're having some sudden dramatic luck but with the mars pluto square it may be at the cost of something to do with your home life where you live someone in the home or breaking away or change of career path i would say be very careful and tiptoe around your primary love relationship around this time because while jupiter brings luck he also brings blessed ending so be attentive to the sky around may the 19th 20th for what can be a positive new beginning, but also some, you know, pretty intense energy. Um, I would say also that you could find this energy constructive because you are lucky. You are Jupiter. North Node's expanding. You're breaking three. You've got luck. You've got, you're coming outside the box. you got Uranus there. Like you're like busting out that survive. Okay. Um, in fact, the whole last week of May, and the first beginning part of June is very exciting for you, Jupiter North Node conjunction, right? With Mercury going direct by the seventh. So I don't know. It's like, I don't know what to say for a lot of Tauruses is breakthrough energy. That's the best I can say, but it may come at a cost because by the time we get to that 21st, when there's a really tight T-square, that's when the T-square is just shortly after the new moon. It looks like some massive changes regarding things to do with home and career breaking through the sky and could impact significant others as well. Now you have an eclipse on May the 5th in the house of your love partner, your significant other, your main squeeze. That's a full moon eclipse. Some big light is shining there, but it brings completions. It brings new perceptions. It brings something to fullness that may have started way back in October, like October the 25th, when there was a new moon eclipse in your significant other house, business partnerships, marriages in particular. Mars is the ruler of the marriage house and he's squaring it from the fourth. So this is like kind of a make or break grand cross and it can involve significant long-term love relationships, business partnerships, and legal matters, especially legal matters, contracts, vows, and agreements, either breaking down or breaking through around that time. So yeah, like the 21st, 22nd of May, just after the new moon. Wow. It's very intense energy for you. So I have to say, not always is the sky a, a bed of roses and super easy. And this is one of those times, but again, you got luck. You got Jupiter on your side in the house of you. Now, this is not one of those things where I do every little detail of the sky because we'd be here for an hour instead of 15 minutes, but I'm looking at through the sky at some of my notes to see what the next thing I think you might want to know about just because of your sign where Venus might be involved in other words. Um, so let's talk about Venus sextiling Saturn. I mean, not Venus. Did I say Venus? Yeah. No, Venus sextiling Mercury. And um, so Mercury sextiles Venus and Saturn at the same time is what I'm saying. Creates around the 10th of May to the 13th, a mini grand trine, which is very positive, very op opportunity oriented, very easy and flowing energy. Now, um, this is Mercury on May 10th, 11th, 12th, now direct in the sign of you. You know, you're in command. You got the messages, the news, the negotiating power, the ideas here. 
and there's a flow to Saturn in the house of great gains from your career, pennies from heaven, windfalls, uh, help from allies. In this case, it would be someone in power, someone in authority, even a boss could be in the 11th house, but you're having some love up from a very positive karmic rewards house, your 11th. And also this can look like some kind of new idea about how you wish to great greater financial gains in your life through your career path. So this is happening around May 10th through the 13th, but then there's also at the same time, Mercury sextiling Venus, who's all close to trining Saturn. So it creates that energy flow, that triangle flow. Well, you know, Venus is in your third house. This is trips and travel, skills space, education, and siblings. So many ways it can play out. But between the 10th and the 13th, you want to learn something. You realize it's going to help you financially with great gains from your career. You want, you're going to take a trip and it's going to help you with great gains from your career. You're going to have a new idea regarding a, a partnership project with a sibling, aunt, uncle, niece, or nephew, and cousin. It's going to bring you stabilized long term great gains from your career. Third house is online stuff, websites, social media platforms. If that's a part of your world as it is mine, and you were a Taurus, this could give you some really powerful, lucky new idea breakthrough with partnerships, allies, and benefactors and online world. You know, your 11th house, it can be like, you know, somebody in power who's great, like an influencer or somebody big wants to support something you're doing online and you prosper because of it. Um, elder sibling can help you and guide you to new successes uh, during this time of the dates I gave you, the 10th to the 13th, because elder sibling is where Saturn sits. So support from an elder sibling, and you're starting to bust out regarding things to do with luck and opportunity and the online world. So keep your eye on the ball for some luscious love from the sky at that time. So, um, Venus uh, trining Saturn, lasting love, enduring love. If you're a single Taurus, new love from a trip, new love in the local neighborhood, or new love on an online dating app with someone older, someone who's got your back, someone who's a karmic reward, or somebody who's very stable stabilizing for you. All of those are possible for single Taurians in the window of the 10th to the 13th. And anything else that Venus is involved in, that's what I'm talking about. She sextiles Uranus. Oh, excitement, sudden surprises. Yes, this is the 25th and 6th of May. And she'll be moving at that time through the sign of cancer. And Uranus is in the house of you. Something exciting and sudden and surprising to do with a love, a love relationship in a local neighborhood pub, a friendship with a woman, traveling with a woman, learning something new, but it all brings a sense of rejuvenating excitement and maybe pineal gland downloads. So you're on us. Aha, big ideas, exciting developments. Lucky you. Um, I think that's about it. And as I said, if I went through every single thing, we'd be here forever. I hope the teaser of, a, of the month of May, if I said April again, I apologize, the month of May is useful and that you can use this and harness the best of the sky in the month ahead. Please don't forget to check my description box for everything I offer, courses, etc., readings with me, Patreon community, and more. And if you're watching now, please hit that like button and subscribe. It does really help the channel grow. This is one of the things that I love to do in my work as an astrologer is create content for you guys. So the more you love me up, the more I love you back. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone. Take care. And hopefully you have an amazing May.